So let's get right into it. What if our entire approach to mental health has been missing the point? What if the real issue isn't a chemical imbalance, but an energy crisis happening inside our own heads? Today, we're diving into a really groundbreaking theory from Harvard psychiatrist Dr. Chris Palmer that connects the food we eat, our body's metabolism, and, well, the very fabric of our mental well-being. All right, here's our game plan. We're going to start with a patient story that is just, frankly, unbelievable. From there, we'll unpack the new theory that story inspired, look at the deep science behind our cell's tiny powerhouses, and see how a 100-year-old epilepsy treatment is suddenly offering brand new hope for the future. So, our story kicks off with a patient who had basically lost all hope, a man whose illness had really pushed modern medicine to its absolute breaking point. 17. Just think about that number. That's how many different medications had been tried and had failed to help a 33-year-old man with schizoaffective disorder. He had tried literally everything, and absolutely nothing was working. As Dr. Palmer puts it, his life was just a constant state of torment. I mean, he was hearing voices every single day, battling these terrifying paranoid delusions that made it impossible to even leave his house. He was completely convinced that powerful families were controlling his mind. And then, for a completely unrelated reason, just to lose some weight, he decided to try the ketogenic diet. And what happened next was miraculous. Within just two weeks, his mood and energy were way up. By week eight, the voices started to quiet down, and his own delusions began to sound, as he put it, kind of crazy. Fast forward to today, that same man is 160 pounds lighter, lives completely on his own, and get this, he performs improv comedy. This absolutely stunning turnaround forced his doctor to ask a very simple question. What in the hell just happened? That one incredible recovery, it was a clue. It pointed towards a totally radical new idea, a completely different way of thinking about what actually causes mental illness in the first place. Okay, so here's the central idea. Dr. Palmer is proposing that many mental illnesses aren't primarily a chemical problem, but a metabolic one, a metabolic disorder of the brain. It means the brain cells themselves are literally struggling to generate and use energy properly. You see how this completely reframes the entire problem, right? For decades, the story has been all about brain chemistry, serotonin, dopamine, all that. This new paradigm shifts the focus to brain energy, its metabolism, and that simple but profound shift, well, it opens up a whole new world of treatment possibilities. Okay, so if mental illness is a brain energy problem, then we have to ask the next logical question. What's the actual physical link between the food on our plate and how our brain functions day to day? The answer, it turns out, isn't floating around in the synapses between our neurons. Nope, it's inside the cells themselves in the billions and billions of tiny engines that power our entire existence. We all learned this in biology, right? Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. But here's the thing. Recent science is showing they are so, so much more than that. They're not just a simple power supply. They're more like the cell's motherboard, the sophisticated master regulators that are calling all the shots. And this is just, it's brilliant. It illustrates exactly how central they are. Look at this list. Mitochondria directly control the production of serotonin and dopamine. They decide which of your genes get switched on or off. They run your entire stress response, manage inflammation, and even synthesize hormones like estrogen and testosterone. These are the exact same systems that researchers have been pointing to as culprits in mental illness for decades. And it turns out, the mitochondria are running the whole show. So how does the body keep these little powerhouses in good shape? Well, it has this amazing quality control system. Think of it like a deep clean. A process called mitophagy clears out all the old worn out mitochondria, and then another one, biogenesis, builds brand new high performance ones. And what's really crucial here is that specific things like the ketogenic diet are powerful triggers for this whole cellular renewal process. You're basically upgrading your brain's entire energy grid. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Using a diet to treat a serious brain disorder it might sound a little bit like a new age fad, but here's the thing. It's actually a well-established medical strategy with more than a hundred years of history behind it. Yeah, this goes way back. I mean, all the way to ancient Greece, people noticed that fasting could stop seizures. That observation eventually led doctors at the Mayo Clinic back in 1921 to develop the ketogenic diet for one very specific purpose, to mimic the metabolic state of fasting in order to treat epilepsy. And guess what? It worked. About 85% of patients saw real improvement. 
So why does any of this matter for mental health? Because the pipeline between neurology, the study of epilepsy, and psychiatry is already built. It's a two-way street. We borrow treatments from the field of epilepsy all the time. In fact, just look at this list. So many common psychiatric drugs that tens of millions of people rely on every single day. Depakote, Lamictal, even things like Valium. They're actually anti-seizure medications. So if we're already using epilepsy pills, then using an evidence-based epilepsy diet, well, that's not some radical jump. It's actually the next logical step. But, and this is a really, really important but, it is critical to understand that this is not some casual lifestyle diet you read about in a magazine. This is a powerful medical intervention. It has to be prescribed and managed with the same seriousness as any potent medication. And the approach has to be completely customized. It's not one size fits all. For a patient who is overweight, the strategy is all about restricting carbs so their body starts using its own fat for fuel. But for a thin patient, you have to do the opposite. You load them up with healthy dietary fats to fuel the process without them losing any more weight. And this isn't guesswork. For serious psychiatric conditions like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, doctors are aiming for high levels of ketones in the blood. This gives them a hard number, an objective biological marker, just like a blood test for a medication, that confirms the diet is actually working on a metabolic level. And I really cannot stress this enough. This has to be done with medical supervision. Changing the brain's main fuel source is a big deal. It can have powerful effects and almost always requires careful adjustments to existing medications. As Dr. Palmer warns, just stopping your meds cold turkey, it can be incredibly dangerous. So where is all this headed? Well, this metabolic way of thinking about mental health is more than just an interesting theory. It is launching a whole new era of research, new clinical trials, and most importantly, it's giving real hope to millions of people. And the early results from some of these pilot studies are just stunning. In one French hospital study, they took patients with chronic, treatment-resistant depression, bipolar, and schizophrenia. Every single one of them, 100%, saw improvement. But here's the truly mind-blowing part. Nearly half of them, 46%, achieved full remission of their illness. Let me be clear, that just doesn't happen with our current treatments. It's unheard of. And all of this leads us to one final really provocative question. As we get smarter about the brain's metabolism, you just have to wonder, could the most powerful tool for healing our minds have been right there on our plates this whole time? It seems that by fixing the brain's energy supply, we might finally have a way to truly heal our minds.